Uh, here is a speech given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1991, on the second day of the holiday of Shavuot. In, outside of Israel, the holiday of Shavuot is two days. In Israel, it's only one day. <clears throat> one of the big novelties that's going to be in the days of the Mashiach like the Rambam says Maimonides <clears throat> that in those days there will be more awareness of God and wisdom and truth that this king, Mashiach, Shiyamod Mazira David, that will come from David, namely the King Mashiach, Melech Mashiach, Baal Chachma Yeye Yoter Mi Shlomo. They'll be wiser than King Solomon. The Navi Godel, and they'll be a tremendous, they'll be an amazing prophet. Korov La Moshe Rabbeinu, close to Moses. Some people say it'll be more than Moses, close to Moses, or people say less than Moses. In any case, it'll be a prophet. Therefore, Yilmad, he will teach all the people the Yorah Otam Derech Hashem, and he will teach them the way of God. This is in the laws of Tshuva. We just finished learning this in the Rambam, Maimonides. <clears throat> okay, so the Maimonides, just for those that don't know, Maimonides was Moses ben Maimon. He lived about 900 years ago, 850 years ago. Sorry. And he wrote a book, the 14 volumes, which are all of the laws of Judaism. Incredible genius, that the, uh, incomparable. There is no other book like that in all of Judaism. All of the laws of Judaism it has. <clears throat> and there are some places where there's other opinions that disagree with certain laws that he has. And there's a lot of, you know, he... Uh, awakened up a lot uh, awakened awakened a lot of discussion in 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 uh, the torah his ideas you know where some of his ideas he came where they came from and some people they 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 spend the debate joseph on justifying everything that he said and and other people they try to find the you know contradictions to what he said and sometimes the law is not like him but nevertheless but there's one at the finally in the end, after all these thousands and thousands and thousands of laws and details. So the Rambam says the Maimonides. Rambam is called Rab, Rabbi Moshe Moses ben Maimon. That's his abbreviation, Rambam. Rab Moses ben Maimon. So he said that the <clears throat> there's the Mashiach. Mashiach is going to come. He's going to change all the Jewish people, bring all the Jewish people back to Judaism. He'll bring. He'll, he'll teach everyone <clears throat> the laws. <clears throat> the laws will strengthen the observance of the laws of Judaism according to the written Torah, according to the Talmud, according to the oral Torah. And then he says like this, anyone who does not wait for Mashiach does not believe in Mashiach and anticipate his coming, wait for him to come. And there was, he's supposed to come any moment. Any person that does not believe in Mashiach, that there's going to be such a person like that, and that he's going and wait for him actually to come. Not just okay, so it'll it'll be, I believe, but but to actually physically wait for him to actually come, he's denying the whole entire Torah. Uh, it's like Jews being living in Egypt and not believing in Moses, or receiving the Torah and not believing in Moses. In fact, that's what happened when they received the Torah and they thought Moses was going to come back, so they worshipped the golden calf. They went up on Mount Sinai. They thought he wasn't going to come back <clears throat> for whatever reason it is, and they they worshipped the golden calf. So without Moses, in this case, the Moses of a generation is the Mashiach. Without this person leading the Jews, so the Jews lapse into uh, confusion and etc. Okay, so this Mashiach, this person, the Mashiach, he is going to do what Moses did and much more, much more. As miraculous as it was, what Moses did, and that's the basis of Judaism. Huh? That's the basis of Judaism. Judaism, the basis of Judaism is not just a, you know a rabbi that stands up on and the pulpit gives nice lectures or that he appears on television and writes books. That's not the main thing of Judaism. The main thing of Judaism is a religion and we're going to go to heaven and that's not that's not Judaism. That's not the main. Those things are good. Those things are okay. You want to write books, you want to be on television, you want to go to heaven, those are good. But that's not the, the main message of Judaism is not all that. 
The message of Judaism is that this world will be perfect, to perfect the world. And perfecting mean, the world means that the world will become dynamic. It'll become alive. It'll become constantly changing and improving. It's not that we'll be in heaven. In heaven, everything is set. But you go to heaven, it's like an old folks home. You just, ooh. but that's not the goal. Definitely not. Judaism is dynamic. How do you say vitality? The thing that's alive is always moving. We'll see the miracle and the, 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 the how do you say, the, the power of every detail of this world, the goodness, the blessing. Okay. So it says Mashiach is going to come and then the world will be filled with the awareness of God. Everything we'll see, everything is being created by God and everything is being created by a reason. Every rock, every plant, every tree. We'll see, wow, it's a miracle. God is creating everything and everything is being created for a godly reason. The fiqh is there for the Jewish people. They will be great wise people and they'll know secret things and they'll understand the, 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 the how do you say, the, they'll feel the presence of their creator <clears throat> according to each person. That's dot. Jewish people, because after all, the Jewish people are the sons of God. We're the sons of God. That's what it says in the Bible, anyway. Sons of God. <clears throat> Every Jew is the son of God. Who would dream that? <clears throat> right? One guy stood up, one Jew stood up and says he's the son of God. He drove everybody crazy. There's three billion people believe in him. And he, in fact, misled everybody. <laughs> he lied and misled everybody through the whole world into confusion, <clears throat> which hopefully now that confusion is coming to a head. <clears throat> it's coming to a head. We see the, the, the shocking results when you try to change the Torah and you take away the laws of the Torah. Life is worth nothing, right? But the fact of the matter is that despite this person using it to, to dis the, the destroy and confuse the world, the, every Jew, in fact, is the son of God. And we'll see what that means when Mashiach comes. The Omar Chazal, come like the language of the rabbis, Miyasad al Apostle Torah me'ititetse, it says the Torah will come out from me. Ki Torah me'ititetse. Where is the sentence from? In Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah says that in the future, when Mashiach comes, the Torah will come out from me. And Midrash, there's a Midrash that explains, what does it mean, the Torah? Torah chadasha me'ititetse. A new Torah is going to come. Chirush Torah. A renewed Torah is going to come from me. <laughs> It also says that there's going to be a new heaven and earth also. What does it mean? That God is going to sit with Dorish Torah and teach a new Torah that's going to be given by means of the Mashiach. Oh, what's this mean? A new Torah? Now, it doesn't mean no Torah. It means a new Torah. It means that everything that's there that is now in the Torah is going to be amplified a million times. We're going to see the godliness, the love, the blessing, and every word, every letter of the Torah, every commandment. We're going to see the uniqueness and, and the, 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 the holiness, the specialness of every single Jew. The land of Israel, the, 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 the holy temple, what the, what the what the sacrifices are. Huh? This is the sacrifices will be renewed. Who needs sacrifices? What is, and then we'll see what a wonderful, amazing thing it is that we can make sacrifices, bring an animal to the temple. We should, nothing will be good. That's what it means it's going to be new. We'll see. <clears throat> what does it mean that it's going to be brand new? It says, Yeshlomo, we can say, Sheinian said, this is hinted at what the Rambam says, that the King Mashiach is going to be very wise, like King Solomon, and he's going to be a prophet. He's going to be a prophet. <clears throat> Therefore, he'll be able to teach all the Jewish people. Shekiv and Shantanavi Gadol, since he's going to be a prophet. Now, what's a prophet? A prophet is a person that receives direct, precise messages from God. Look, and therefore, Titkaleh, that will be revealed to the Mashiach, Torah Chadasha, a new Torah that's going to come from God. And he's going to teach this Torah to the, all the people. Okay, what does this mean? We'll see. Oh, <clears throat> beer, an Indian explanation. What is this new Torah that's going to be? <clears throat> There's two meanings to this. What does it mean, a new Torah? One meaning of the Torah means that the Torah is his kalus. <clears throat> this is what it says in Shira Shirim, in the Song of Songs, right? In the beginning of Song of Songs, it says, God will kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. That's what it means. There's going to be new, will re, God will reveal. The Torah is just God's speech. It's God's speech. Will re, reveal the thought behind that speech. 
the reasons and the secrets of the Torah, like it says in the in the Yerushalmi, there are things shemeshakim aleim etapeh that you how do you say you meshikim uh, sifatayim aleim that you close your mouth because of them etapeh ve'en legalosim you don't reveal them shokas means to be covered you cover your mouth meshikim that's that's one meaning yeshakeni even neshikas pio. He will kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, or you can say he will close. Yishakeni, he will close up his mouth. Also, what is a kiss? What is a kiss? A kiss means two two lips closed with two other lips. So it's closed. That's what a kiss is. So it's the same thing as there's secrets of the Torah that now are kissed, that they're concealed, they're hidden. The Indian Emelo in this, his gala will be revealed in the new Torah that's going to come. Shemuv tachim that we are pray, we are promised from God. Lofia od aleim uba'er that God said that He is going to come and explain the words of the Torah, the secrets of the Torah, and it's what's concealed inside of it. Kafisha mitzim like we find like we find in many places it says the Mashiach will teach the secrets of the Torah to all of the people. Now what are the secrets of the Torah? The secrets of the Torah is the godliness of the Torah. The love of God. And this will, that, that's number one. Number one is that the new Torah will be new explanations and deeper, deeper, deeper explanations of the Torah will feel the soul of the Torah. The soul of the Torah will be revealed. Not that it'll stop the body of the Torah. The commandments will still be there. But the soul will be new powers. Huh? Like they have all these, you know, Superman and Batman, all these things. The, the people are still people, but they just reveal new powers that you never thought they were. Well, that lahavdil, that's what the Torah is going to be. The same exact Torah, but it'll be new revelations in the Torah. New understandings of the commandments, of the meal, of the words. That's number one. In other words, the Torah will be enlivened. Number two, chidush behilchos the Torah, laws Let's not say enlivened. Let's say a better word. What? Uh, miraculously empowered. Huh? We'll feel the miracle of the Torah. That's the first meaning. The new Torah that, that Mashiach will reveal are the secrets of the Torah. Second meaning. Chirush b'hilchos the Torah. There'll be new laws. Kere'ita b'midrash, like it says in the midrash, b'nogei al-leviyatan b'shorabor. Okay, now this is a bit strange, so just, you know, the Rebbe will explain it. It says that in the future there's going to be a big battle between a big fish and a big ox. The big fish is called Leviathan, and the big ox or the big yeah, ox is called Shor Habor, Shurabar, Shurabar, which means the Shurabar means means the wild ox or the pure ox or whatever. How will they? They'll be this big meal. <clears throat> it says there's a big, big meal for the tzaddikim. Big meal. What for this big fish and this big ox? How are they? Can't eat them alive. How will they be slaughtered? It says, Behemoth, this big animal, this big ox, he will stick his horns into the uh, to the fish, to this big fish, Bakaro, maybe even a whale, who knows? Fish, Bakaro, and he will rip it open. The Leviathan and the fish, Notats, the Behemoth, the San Pirov. And the fish, he will uh, stab the animal with his fins, the Nochru, and he will rip it open. The Zush, Rita Kasherahi. No, sorry, no, and it'll kill. Good. So, okay. Now, the law is in Judaism that fish you don't have to slaughter in any particular way. In fact, technically, you can even eat a fish alive in Judaism, but it says you shouldn't do it because it's disgusting. So, okay, so you kill the fish however you want to. You can just leave it out, just leave it out, and it dies, and then you can eat it. Huh? Then you can eat it. <clears throat> but what about an ox? How can you use an ox? Well, an ox is very difficult to slaughter an ox. You have to have a sharp knife. The knife has to be smooth and it has to be very, very sharp. And then you have to move it across the throat of the animal in a certain way. You can't stop. You have to move it back and forth. 
<coughs> and uh, yeah, okay, you have to move the, the knife back and forth. Unless the knife is really long, then you can just uh, just move it one direction. In any case, you have to slide it across the throat of the animal, and you have to cut the windpipe and the food pipe. And it, it, uh, and you say best if you also cut the veins. You don't have to cut the veins up. You cut the food pipe and the windpipe, and that is a kosher slaughtering. If for some reason you don't move the knife back and forth, or let's say start from the beginning. If the knife is not smooth, or it's not sharp, or you don't move it smoothly like this, right? Let's say you hack it, hack it, or if you dig underneath the 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 food pipe or the windpipe, <clears throat> or if you cut it in the wrong place, let's say you cut it from the back of the neck, or cut it and they don't get to the windpipe, then the animal is not kosher. It's not kosher. It's it's not. So it says, good. Okay, in the future, let's go back to our topic. It says, in the future, this is the Midrash says, in the future, there's going to be this huge fish and this huge ox, and they're going to fight, and they're going to kill each other, and this will make a meal for the, the tzaddikim. They're going to eat the tzaddikim says the ox will kill the fish with its horns. Okay, that's okay. And the fish will kill the ox with its fins. The Gemara says, <clears throat> This is a proper slaughtering. Did we not learn? You can use any sort of material to slaughter with, if you want a stone with a glass, but it has to be at, at any time, you can, except for Mughal Katsira. You're not allowed to slaughter an animal with like a, a saw. Omigra You can't use something which has which is serrated, which is not serrated, which is what do you call it? That has ups and downs. Because the the, the, the animal has to be slaughtered with something smooth, not something that has was jagged, which is jagged, because that tears open, it it it, it chokes the animal. God said, Torah Chadasha That's where we get this whole thing. It's going to be a new Torah. Isaiah said there's going to be a Torah. God said it's going to be a new Torah. Chirush Torah I'm going to renew the Torah. Chirush Bahalchos Torah. It's going to be a new law in the Torah. Shechita Kazu that this will be kosher. Huh? That's going to be the new Torah. The new Torah says that this type of a shechita, this type of slaughtering, will be okay. Will there be other laws that will be renewed? Eh, not really so much, but the, I, you have to really find it. This is the main place. This is the main one. This is going to be a new law in the Torah. Here's the example. Even if there's one new law in the Torah, the, the, the Maimonides says that if anyone stands up and says that even one law of the Torah is no longer uh, applicable, no longer, of course, if the, the laws of the Holy Temple, we can't do it because we don't have a, a Holy Temple. There are laws which, according to the situation, you can't do. But a person that says, you don't have to put on tefillin anymore. Huh? You don't have to put on tefillin anymore because now we have Eretz Israel or something, whatever it is, is that person is denying the whole entire Torah. Or a person that says, all you have to do is put tefillin on your arm. right? Or you put one mezuzah on your door. Something like that. That person is denying the whole Torah. Even one letter of the Torah. If you change one letter of the Torah, it says it's not from God. It says that that person is essentially denying all Judaism. But denying all Judaism. So how can it be here? There's a new, a whole new law that you can slaughter an animal in such a way with a, with a fish will slaughter. Not only that a person has to slaughter, it's a fish is going to slaughter. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. It says that it's going to be a new Torah. That's going to be a new law. Right? That's pretty much the only example you can find of a new law. But nevertheless, it's one law. It doesn't make any difference if it's one or if it's a hundred. Even to change one law is changing the whole entire thing. It says Mashiach is going to do it. How is it going to be? Just one. I just want to. Wait just one second. Excuse me. Excuse me. One minute. Do it again. Sorry. Um, all right. So now we have to understand. Dover Baror. It's it's obvious. It is clear in the Torah. <clears throat> that the Torah is a commandment forever. The Olam that's given by God, it'll never change. 
The Torah will never be changed. It will never be, uh, you can't uh, remove from it and you can't add to it. Shinyamar, like it says, it's called Davar Asher Anechim Etzavecho Ayom Tishmuru Lasod. Everything that I have commanded you today, you must do Loto Sefalov. You're not allowed to add onto it and you cannot remove from it. The Nehemar, and it says, Baniglos Lanu Luvanenu, that that which God revealed to us, that is for us and for our children forever. It's talking about the Torah. Lasot it called Divrei Torah Zot to do everything it says in the Torah. Ha Lamarta, so we taught. She called Divrei Torah that all the words of the Torah Mitsuvim Anu Lasotam. We have to do them forever. The Kain Walmart, that's what it says. Chukos Olam the Dorosechem. It says it will be an eternal statute forever. Many many times it says that in the Torah, an eternal law. The Neamar that says Lo B'Shamayimi. It is not in heaven. So we see she'en navi rashai lechadesh daber me'ato. A prophet cannot come, or a person cannot come, or the Mashiach, or whatever. He can't come and say you don't have to do laws anymore. You don't have to do even one law, <clears throat> right? You don't have to put on the, the tefillin, and we don't have to keep Shabbos anymore. You don't have to put on a mezuzah. You don't, even one small thing, a prophet cannot change. If he does, he's a false prophet, and really the punishment is death. We don't do those things nowadays. I hope he's according to this story of Bill, we have to understand. One second. You want to tell me nothing will change? Here we just finished saying that it will change. This idea of the slaughtering of the ox and the fish. We're going to say that the fish slaughters the ox. You can't do that according to the Torah. That's not according to the Torah. It says, oh yeah, that's going to be according to the new law that the Mashiach is going to bring. Because Mashiach is going to be a big prophet. <clears throat> hey, one second. What do we care if he's a prophet or not? No one can ever change the Torah. It says, Lo it's not in heaven. We just said the prophet cannot change the Torah. How is it that the, all of a sudden when this fish kills the, 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 the ox, we're going to be able to eat it? That's against the Torah. You can't eat an ox that's been killed by a fish. And especially it's been killed by a, by a, by a, by a fin, which is like a saw. You can't, the whole thing is, doesn't make any sense. But that's going to be the law. How can it be? Over Prati associated in more detail. Whether we're talking about revealing the first opinion, what it means, a new Torah, that God is going to reveal new, new secrets of the Torah, or whether we're talking about that there's going to be new laws of the Torah, regarding the secrets of the Torah, since that these reasons, they are not revealed by means of learning and simply learning the Torah. But by means of Torah Chadasha if these ideas that are in the Torah that Mashiach is going to reveal, if these are ideas that we cannot come to now on our own abilities, only Mashiach is going to reveal them. Why? Because he's going to be a big prophet. He's going to be a navi. He's going to receive direct messages from God. This is prophecy. You can't make laws up or give new understanding from prophecy. This is not Torah. Torah has to come from human understanding. You want to understand things, you have to take what we have now, and you can understand right, <clears throat> what it is. You have to prove what you say. You have to have some sort of a of a of a uh, of a proof of what you say. You say, no, Mashiach is going to come and he's going to bring secrets of the Torah that nobody even dreamed of. Right? Nobody even dreamed of new things that you cannot come by human intelligence, cannot perceive. And Mashiach is going to reveal that that's not Torah. The Torah can't reveal new deep secrets. Right, the, 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 no one can come along and re reveal new deep secrets that nobody knew before. That's regarding the secrets of the Torah. I mean, listen, anyone can say anything they want to. A person can make new laws of the Torah. You can make new connections to the Torah. In fact, you're commanded to do some. So, you're supposed to make new connections to the Torah all the time. But they have to be things which are in within the realm of human understanding. Even the secrets of the Torah, the deepest ideas of the Arizal, there's people that sit and they learn Kabbalah, right? There's Kabbalah, the, the, the uh, places of Kabbalah schools, what where they sit and they learn Kabbalah. There, there's people that do. They they learn, you know, Ben Ishchai, they learn the, the different, you know, different uh, the the books of Kabbalah, they learn. But especially the Kabbalah, the result. There's what's called, what is it called? The Beit Kale in Yerushalayim. <clears throat> it used to be Rav Sharabi and Rav, Rav Kaduri. They used to teach Kabbalah. They learn Kabbalah. But these are ideas that can be understood. Mashiach is going to bring ideas which were totally concealed before, which are not in human understanding. 
people are going to have to change in order to learn. How can Mashiach reveal ideas that are not within the whole gamut of human understanding? That's not Torah. That's prophecy. That's prophecy. It's not called Torah. Also, regarding the laws of the Torah, since the, <clears throat> it says in the Torah clearly that slaughtering an animal, an ox, has to be with a knife, and the knife has to be smooth, and if it's a knife that's paguma, that has a blemish in it, it's not kosher. How can it possibly be that in the future it'll be, this is going to be good? This is the opposite of the Torah. And it says the Torah is never going to change. All the words of the Torah are found now, and they're eternal. And that's it says, Chuka Solom, it says it's going to be eternal. How can it change? How is going to going to change? Says the Rebbe, we can understand by preceding something. And Yuvan, we can understand by understanding Bechidushi Torah Bezamanazeh. Okay, let's understand the idea. I just finished telling you that it's an obligation. It says, We're supposed to learn Torah and to make new connections in the Torah all the time. But especially this arises in nowadays there's questions that are asked to rabbis. Questions that are asked in, in regards to electricity, in regards to things that which are not clearly in, in, in the Torah. Is electricity considered to be fire or not? You know, what is what is exactly considered to be carrying? What is considered to be sick? Is it permissible to take this type of pill? Things that weren't mentioned clearly in the Torah. A lot of laws of marriage, a lot of laws of divorce, a lot of laws of propriety, of property, things which are not clear. There's a lot of things that are not clear in the world. The Torah was given general principles and we have to use these general principles and apply them to cases in the world. So there's genius people. There's famous people that did it. The Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, he was very famous that he wrote books of you know, answering questions in law, very deep, and he would bring deep sources. And there were other people that were you know, no, no less genius than he. Then they would bring you know, ideas and, 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 and new connections in the Torah that weren't, and in fact, it's an obligation to do so, to find new things in, in the Talmud new connections in the Talmud to explain, you know, different. You see that the Rebbe has a lot of, you know, to explain what is the the, the general, uh, how do you say, the general policies of Beit Shammai compared to Beit Hill and how that applies to all the different cases and etc. <clears throat> how can it be that Mashiach is going to bring a new Torah with new ideas and new... Okay, so the Rebbe says, okay, let's look first of all at the, the fact that nowadays also we're supposed to find new ideas in the Torah. Like the rabbis say, call Masha Talmid Vatik Atid the Chadish. This is in Moses on Mount Sinai. He was shown everything that every, he was shown the whole future. Even what, uh, how do you say, the, the serious pupils would reveal in the future. He was shown. Hakol Nitan, everything was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Lechadesh, it says everything that a, a, a good, a serious pupil would Invent, make new. Chadesh means to discover. Oh, to discover. <clears throat> it means that he'll he'll discover something new. This is a chirushel Talmud Chacham. There's a new discovery in the in the Torah. and Zen. Nevertheless, if it was new, so that means it's brand new. It says no. It was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. So if one second, if all the ideas in the Torah were given to Moses on Sinai. Then how can it say he was even given ideas that will be discovered anew by pupils? If Moses knew it, so he already discovered it. It's not going to be the. <clears throat> it's already so it's not new. What does it mean that we have an obligation to find new ideas and new connections in the Torah? Nothing is new. Moses knew everything, didn't he? So it's just like this. But not in Torah. When God gave the Torah, God gave Moses Klalia Torah, the general principles of the Torah. Sha'al Yudam, that through them, we can know these boros, boros, to make logical connections, b'halachos, palpel, and to discuss them, b'kushos, and ask questions and give answers, layer it to come down to the depth of these ideas of the laws, to understand one thing within another, l'idamos, and to compare one thing to another, and then lechadesh chidush elachos, and to make new laws. Okay, just to remind everyone, the Torah; these are the ideas of God. These are not the ideas of Moses or some very smart person or you know, the, the elders made it up. 
these, I mean, this is very difficult to understand, but it's the fact. The laws of the Torah, even the most mundane laws of the Torah, not to light a fire on Shabbat, not to write two letters on Shabbat, right? And the, these are God's laws. These are not laws that are made up by the rabbis in order to, you know, keep us in line or, to, you know, to strengthen Judaism or keep everybody in, in the dark, you know, in the dungeon of, of you know, confusion. That everybody's just afraid, you know, step on a crack, you break your mother's back, you know, just be afraid of doing that. These are laws by uh, that were given by God to the Jewish people, opportunities to do what God wants, to fulfill the purpose why we're in this world, to use our free will, to actually connect the creation to the creator. So because these laws are God's laws, it means that they're very, very deep. Right? They can't be taken only on face value. They have to be taken on face value also. You have to actually do the commandments. <clears throat> but the idea is, is that these ideas are uh, godly ideas, so it's an obligation to try to understand them with all of our ability that we can, as much as we can. He rose, so does the Torah, because the majority of the secrets of the Torah, which are the wisdom of Kabbalah, they are, <clears throat> and understanding God, these are concealed in the Agadis of the Torah, the, what's called the, the what do they call it? The Agadis of the Torah. The stories, the homiletic stories in the Torah. Lochem, therefore, mitzadzeh, shetal mitbatek, yitgagia, that a serious pupil <clears throat> will work hard, will make effort in his mind, will strain his mind to understand and to find and to reveal these secrets which are hidden in the Torah by God. <clears throat> Therefore, it's called his chidush. He's, it's his invention, so to speak, his discovery. I, Moses, already knew it. Good, but Moses, so to speak, he kept it secret. <clears throat> because of this, <clears throat> that he will find this novel novel idea, novel eye, what do they call it? Novel eye. <clears throat> By means of this, and because he used the general principles of the Torah, of Moses, so it's considered to be part of the Torah, but it's also a novel idea in the Torah. Similarly, also we can say regarding to the new Torah that's going to be given in the time of the Mashiach. <clears throat> and that was given in Mount Sinai. This is the one time, and everything that was given in the Torah was given in Mount Sinai, including this new Torah. <clears throat> it's never going to be again the giving of the Torah. And when the Torah was given, everything was given. Also the new Torah that's going to come from the Mashiach was also given on Mount Sinai. Sinai, the secrets of the Torah that were given. Just like Moses knew everything that was going to be revealed in the Torah in the future, so also the same thing when the Torah was given, this new Torah of the Mashiach was also given there. All of it. It was given all to Moses. It was included in the concealment of the Torah that was on Sinai. So, so to speak, nowadays the Mashiach is only going to reveal these things. It's not going to be really a, a novelty. He's just going to Enable everyone to discover what was there. And the sheish chiluki is sowed, but there's just different, uh, different between the novelties that, that are going to be by the, that are revealed by a, a expert pupil, a serious pupil, and those that are going to be revealed by the Mashiach. What are going to be these reveals? <clears throat> let's see. Should we do this? Okay, let's do it. The novelties in the Torah that are going to be revealed now, that by means of learning the Torah and comparing one idea to the other, and deepening our minds in the Torah. This is by means of <clears throat> how do you say, exerting our mind, our limited mind, and the mind of the, of, in this case, of the pupil, right, of the of the serious pupil. So this is understood that even before it was revealed, this was included in the Torah in a way that's possible for a person to reveal them. They were there. We just have to exert our mind, and then we can understand. <clears throat> uh, something like, let's take an example, I mean, a, a physical example. Einstein. Einstein didn't invent anything. Einstein just revealed, if he's if what he said is right, he just revealed certain principles of nature that were concealed previously. He just put it all together and he revealed certain principles of nature. The same thing, Lahabdil, not to say the same thing, because that's nat that's nature. Here we're talking about godly wisdom. But godly wisdom, it's, it was all given and it's just revealed. We can reveal it by just making an effort on our mind like Einstein made an effort with his mind. Which is not the case, the Torah that Mashiach is going to give that will be revealed in the future, since that is not, it is not in the ability of any human being 
now to reveal it, but only by means of God himself. Like it says, Torah Chadasha Me'it It says the Torah is going to come out from God himself. So it was concealed, it was given on Mount Sinai. But God didn't want it to be revealed. God will reveal it in the days of the Mashiach. So now it's understood. She ha hit kalalutam the Torah that that which these ideas, not novel ideas of Mashiach were included in the Torah. This is in a way that it was totally, totally concealed. That is not relevant to be revealed whatsoever in any way. Lochi and therefore kalalutam the future redemption will be by means of God, will be a novelty. Torah chadasha the ein aroch completely incomprehensible to the Torah nowadays. Let me give you an example. I'm just making this up now. I'm making this example up, but I'm, maybe this is right. You have, let's say, a flintstone, right? In a flintstone, you hit the flintstone, there comes out a spark. And this spark can actually make fire. Now, the flintstone can be underwater. It can be totally cold. There's no heat in it whatsoever. But by means of hitting it, it comes out this spark. So it ends up the spark was really concealed inside of this flintstone. That's something like, I'm telling you, I'm making this up, so don't take this with 100%. That's something like the ideas of the Torah that are now, that we can reveal. You work really hard. You work really hard at trying to understand the ideas. It's like hitting the Flintstone. It's all cold. Nothing is there. All of a sudden, oh, I got an idea. All right, that's the idea. Okay, there's another way, though, of making fire from a stone. And then you can make fire from anything else. That's atomic power. You take an atomic power, According to the way I understand that you can take anything. Everything in the world has atoms in it. And if you can figure out a way to release the power in those atoms, for some reason it's only radioactive stuff. So you see, I don't really understand. But you re reveal the power, which is concealed in an atom. This can be in a potato and anything that has an atom. right? If you could reveal the power in that, that is like really, really, really concealed. That's like super concealed. And it can only be revealed... By in this case, you know, big genius. Of the, that's where my whole metaphor falls apart. But I'm in other words, both of them are concealed. There's concealed fire in a flintstone, and there's concealed fire in an atom. The concealed fire in a flintstone that can be revealed by people. In an atom, it has to have something totally special, right? A change of nature, whatever, to be revealed. And that's what's going to be done by means of the Mashiach. That's the Torah will be taught by the Mashiach. A whole, but it's concealed. It's there. And these new ideas, these new fresh godly ideas, which are in the Torah and also in the commandments, we'll see how this works out with the commandments, it's already there and only Mashiach is going to be revealed. Why? Because God is going to give a special power to or through Mashiach, as we're going to talk about God morning, willing, tomorrow. Now let's do Yom Yom. Sort of took a long time for that. I took a break also, so one second. All right, here we go. Yeah.